what excites me at work is the you know ability through architecture and analysis and, and design to basically provide new capabilities to users that they've never had before. So that was something back in the, the early days with the MIPS or the other research microprocessors that I've done. That's true with the graphics accelerators when I was working on graphics accelerators or, or even the telepresence. So it's um, really great to be able to provide something that's never been provided before for users. From an early age, I was interested in engineering, and uh, engineering kind of runs in my family. So my father was a mechanical engineer, and uh, on my mother's side, her father was an electrical engineer, electromechanical actually, because back then it was mainly about motors and things like that. So I had a, kind of a background of engineering in my family, and for, in the fourth grade, I was interested in electronics. and. Um, by the time I was like in sixth grade or seventh grade, I knew I wanted to design computers. Uh, kids take a long time, maybe even in their 20s, to figure out what they want to do. But I was very interested in it from an early age. So I studied up on computers and tried building my own computers at home in, starting in middle school. And the components back then were really primitive, just on the order of transistors and resistors. So I tried making my own flip-flops out of those and stuff. So. <laughs> I was actually interested in computers when it was more the mainframe supercomputer era. And so there wasn't any home hobbyist computers till I actually got to college. And so back then the computers were all IBM mainframes or the, the other mainframes from the bunch or uh, supercomputers from CDC. In fact, I used a CDC 6600 in college. Back when I was starting, there really wasn't a lot of software, so I was interested in the hardware side. Plus, I think I like having something physical that, that you can touch. When I started out, it was mainframe programming, and there was, I, I had summer jobs programming in COBOL and various other languages on mainframes, but there wasn't a lot you could do. It's not like today where you can make your own web app and publish it. And, it's a lot easier to do software today. It wasn't that easy to do hardware back then either, but uh, that's kind of where I started out. I happen to know Norm Jupy for uh, more than 12 years. Uh, during these 12 years, three years I reported to him. He is one of the most technically skilled people and also one of the best managers I have ever worked for. So I was always interested in industrial labs because they were building things and the computers that I saw you know, came out of industry. Um, but that experience opened me to industrial research. So for many years I was in industrial research, but not just a purely academic style, but actually building prototypes. So the first job I got out of Stanford where I got my PhD was at the DEC Western Research Lab where we built risk research prototypes. And it was the model like Xerox PARC where we built enough of them that all the researchers in the lab could have their own kind of mini supercomputer. So that was something I was very much interested in because I'm interested in building things that you can actually use. Norm Jupy used to be the senior fellow in HP. Just to point out and, and express how important it is, out of 400,000 people, three to 400,000 people, which changed over the years, there were only about six overall senior fellows, and he was one of them. And now I'm at Google, and I, I really like it there a lot. It's um, great to be at a company that's investing in the future, and it's not afraid to take chances. Um, so. If you think about, I've been thinking about the companies that I worked for over the years. Uh, when I worked for DEC, Ken Olson was there, and he'd come by, even in California, he'd visit our lab, and like once a year, he'd travel around, he'd meet with the employees, he was very approachable. A and he was the founder, and he wanted to invest in the future, and uh, 
Hewlett and Packard, when they were at HP, they were very interested in investing for the future and engineering excellence. And now Larry Page and, and Sergey are at Google and they're very interested in investing in the future, even if it's um, different than many people imagine. So things like self-driving cars, Google Glass. And so as an engineer, that's really a great place to work because you have a much bigger canvas to, to draw on. He was expert in many areas. He was the computer architect. Uh, I have heard about his early contributions on the design of the MIPS processor, but I have personally witnessed all the contributions he had made in photonics, non-volatile memory, Hyradix uh, routers, uh, cacti simulation tool uh, for uh, power uh, evaluation. Another thing now that I'm back at Google is that I'm working on chips again. And uh, ch chips is the way you know we've implemented things for 25 years or so. I was involved in the original Stanford MIPS project and I really enjoyed uh, all the things, the aspects of the design. My thesis was on timing verification of, of VLSI circuits and I had kind of a view, kind of the classic Mead Conway view, the tall thin designer where you have a view of the architecture, um, circuit trade-offs, um, physical layout trade-offs and you actually build it and make it. And so I'm, I'm very excited at Google uh, because I'm working on chips again. And I forgot how much I missed working on chips, but uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, I was impressed with how a low overhead manager he was, very uh, low key, uh, but also very caring. Well, there's, there's a bunch of things that the uh, architect has to uh, keep in mind. I think of myself as an architect, but an architect informed by doing the actual physical designs. Uh, you try to have broad, overarching uh, capabilities that are not that, that complex, so basically keep it simple but provide powerful primitives. That's kind of the fundamental thing that was in the whole risk philosophy many years ago, but it's, it's a classic architectural principle that has been used th throughout history not just in computers, but in architecture of you know, buildings or uh, public work systems or things like that. So that's, that's one principle that, that I, I try to apply everywhere. Uh, when I looked at him, how he presented capably to the customers, I was always impressed. And um, he would start low key, but you know, his answers were always precise uh, to any questions that customers might have had. So it was really and truly honor uh, and, and a pleasure working with and, and for Norm. Yeah, I, I think, you know, technologies change. And so, you know, just like there's so certain golden eras, you know, there's a golden era of radio, the golden era of TV. I think right now we're in the golden era of software. One thing about awards is people tend to get them, you know, late in their career, like you know, congratulations on your retirement, here's an award. I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, I've got another 10 years where I can be doing uh, work and hopefully I can add to the, the, the contributions. Mm -hmm.